Lovers of lore, thank you for joining me for this installment of the Phyrexia All Will Be One storyline. Today, we're going to be talking about Ixel versus Geth. Now, to understand Ixel, you have to know who Atraxa is. Atraxa is a Phyrexian angel that was created by Elish Norn. Once upon a time, Atraxa used to be a Mirren Archangel that was giving defense to a whole bunch of other individuals. They were able to flee, but Elish Norn captured Atraxa and converted her into this Phyrexian being. And now Atraxa has taken it a step further by creating her own angel in the form of Ixel. And Ixel has been charged by Atraxa now to hunt the Lich Geth. Geth is a steel thane of the Dross Pit, the Dross Pit being one of the spheres of Phyrexia. So, Ixel has been told that she needs to keep a low profile. She's not allowed to go flying in over the Necrogen pools. She has to go in secretly. Ixel is disgusted by the Dross Pit sphere. She resides in the Fair Basilica, the home of Elish Norn. So, making her way through this disgusting land, she manages to locate what appears to be a gate that will lead to Geth's fortress, because it's atop this giant, unassailable sheer wall. So the gate she's dealing with has impressions in it, and she's standing there touching them, and they're causing different noises to issue forth, and for some reason, the noises are grating and unpleasant to her, and then her thoughts are interrupted by some weird green-skinned thing. And paying closer attention, she realizes it's an elf from maybe a different sphere above. She thought all of this idly while she had her hand wrapped around the elf's throat, crushing it. Not intentionally, his body was just so weak that it was giving way, and she could barely hear what it was saying to her. And it croaked out, need to press them in the right order, please. Ixel loosened her grip a little bit and commanded, identify yourself. I'm Balaxis, you can't kill me. Ixel looked at him blankly. I can. I believe you, please don't. Why not? Because I don't want to die. Ixel looked at him blankly again. Why? Ixel's thoughts told her that Phyrexia says lives have no value individually. They only have value in service to Phyrexia, so there's no other reason to live. But underneath it all, she was also unsettled. She continued to interrogate Balaxis. It turns out that he's Geth's gatekeeper. He made a contract with Geth to save himself from the hunter's maze. And so Ixel draws the conclusion, if I kill you then, the gate will open. And Balaxis responds with, yes, no, no, if you kill me, it will never ever open. Now Ixel had loosened her grip a little, but Balaxis is still choking away. So he's got tears in his eyes, which Ixel thinks are some sort of weird low-class Phyrexian oil. Balaxis is there pleading for his life, saying anything he can, offers to help Ixel get through the gate. So Ixel ends up letting him go, and he pesters her with an annoying barrage of questions about the fair basilica, her life, her wings, her height, and so on, while at the same time, he's instructing her what she needs to do to open the gate, where she needs to place her hands. And she is stoically bearing his company as all of this is going on. When the sequence finished, Ixel surprisingly ends up sparing Balaxis, even though she had an urge to tear him apart. As she leaves Balaxis behind, she's puzzling over the life of being a gate guard, staying in this one spot, desperately wanting to live. And as she's striding off, Balaxis called after, Goodbye, Lady Ixel! Give Lord Geth my regards! Ixel saw a large number of failed Phyrexians, botched completions on her way through Geth's realm, and she couldn't understand why they would continue to exist in this state. Why cling to a meaningless existence? Those thoughts faded as she made her way to what could only be called Geth's throne room. Ixel bristled at the insult. How dare he compare himself to Elish Norn? It was too much. So she called out into the room, Fool! Abomination! Where are you? A moment later, a voice in her ear said, 
You're smaller than I thought you'd be. It was Lord Geth. Ixel whipped around, filled with hatred and revulsion looking at him. His body was pure Phyrexian perfection, but it stopped at his neck. His head was a rotten, uncompleted nightmare. And this was by choice. Geth had refused to allow Phyrexian perfection in its totality to encompass him. And this was an affront to Ixel. Geth looked down at Ixel and said, Norn's opinion of me is surely dropped. To send a mere foot soldier? No praetor, not even Atraxa? Ixel had had enough. She was enraged over him saying Atraxa's name so casually. So she leapt at him. But Geth swatted away her attack with almost no effort. He looked at her condescendingly. Rusty, used to fighting weaklings, I see. Ixel realized Geth was much stronger than anticipated, and Geth looks her directly in the eye saying, what really makes a warrior is knowledge that if you lose, you die. Not that if you lose, there will be thousands of others to take your place. Your ubiquity makes you weak. So Ixel had no real choice but to try and dodge a lot of Geth's attacks, and he harried her until the fight had exhausted her. At that point, Geth snatches Ixel up in a giant metallic pincher with the blade of it directly at her throat. And Ixel forcibly drags her head out of the pincher blade, tearing her own throat open to get at Geth. At the same time, she whips her blade downward and beheads Geth. And croaking through her own ruined throat, she spits at him, rot in the ground, you worthless creature. And then victory settled over Ixel, but at the same time, so did something else, a longing. What could Geth have been if he had just seen the truth of Phyrexian perfection? The next part of the story is wild, because Ixel goes back to Balaxis, scoops him up, and takes him over to the Dominus of Pain, which is this crazy being that was actually formed out of the sphere itself, and it's inscrutable. Nobody really knows exactly what its goals are, but they know that it feeds on pain. So Ixel, in some kind of twisted desire to keep Balaxis, ends up impaling him on the spines of this Dominus of Pain, and they pierce his body. And as they're going through him, he says, why did you do this to me? I helped you. And she says, I know. I'll be forever grateful, and leaves him there, suffering, impaled on the Dominus of Pain. It's absolutely wild. So after dealing with Balaxis, she heads over to the sphere that belongs to Jingataxis, and ends up fashioning her own creation. And this filled her with so much joy, until she returned to the fair Basilica. Because as soon as Atraxa laid eyes on what she had done. She was filled with disgust and full of disdain. What have you done? Ixel was devastated. She fell to her knees. I only wish to create as you've created me. Atraxa sneered down at her. You are a weapon. Ixel pleaded back. I thought Atraxa cut her off with laughter. You thought? Get rid of it. A single word came from Ixel's mouth. Vishrogs. Atraxa said, what? His name is Vishrogs. Get rid of it. And this is where Ixel's destiny shifts. Because she defies Atraxa, she actually sets Vishgaj free back in the dross pits. And when he realizes she's not going to slay him, he tells her that Phyrexia exists at the whims of a tyrant. She remains silent and does not argue with this, which is very much against her nature. After that, she calls him her first defiance and orders him to leave her. But as he wanders out into the night, she's filled with this strong longing to follow him, her creation. In fact, she lent part of her own body, part of her wings are incorporated inside him. So she stands there for hours after he's gone, longing to follow him. But for now, she couldn't. Not yet. She had more important things to do.
All right, my friends, that wraps up this installment of the Phyrexia All Will Be One lore. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you like what's going on on this channel, you can support it either on Patreon or through the channel membership. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I will see you all for the next video. And remember, my friends, lore is life.